Well, I figured today I'll do a quick update on some of my food plots out here. It's uh, the antlerless only hunt right now, so that's why I figured this would be a good time to get out. Just make sure all the cameras are working. Maybe do a quick update because I don't plan hunting, you know, anytime soon. Next weekend will be the earliest. So if I leave some scent out here and spook some deer, it's not the biggest deal. Um, right now I'm standing in my acre and a half cornfield. Right up there is the acre of soybeans. Unfortunately, the coons, they did a lot of damage here. I think it was probably like September, October time frame. Um, Cause this was, by that time, this was like the only corn around. They already had picked the other cornfields and the neighbors. And uh, this silage corn I had in here, I had a strip of silage corn in the middle. And then each side was the field corn. And the silage corn does not dry down as much as the field corn. So it was kind of doughy yet in October and the coons just hammered the stuff. The field corn here, which is a little bit thinner, this stuff was completely dried down, like rock hard, the kernels were. But this silage corn, they did a, a really, a lot of damage in here. You can see how knocked down everything is. All from coons, because I came in here. I mean, you could tell these have been on the ground for a long time and everything's just completely eaten too. So at least they're not just knocking them down and, and wasting them. But uh, it sucks that they came in here. Look at how, you see how thick that is? That's how thick all this was. And then on the other side here is where the, the silage corn goes all the way to right around here. You can see the height difference. That stuff's much taller. And this stuff is not even touched by the coons just simply because this stuff was rock hard and that stuff was a little bit doughier this fall. Didn't dry down as much. Um, so yeah, we got plenty of corn in here. A lot of these um, plants in here, or some of them I should say, have two cobs per plant. See, it's got a little one here, big one up here. A lot of this stuff is pretty thin. You can see there's a plant here, plant hit there, big gap. Didn't run through the planter as good as I was hoping because this was literally just harvested corn that I threw in the bins and just ran it through the planter. But this salad corn, it ran through really, really thick, you can tell. See how many plants there is right there? That's why this stuff is just insanely thick. But uh, it's pretty good ears in here though too considering how thick it was planted. Um, other than this coon damage right here, we still got a ton of corn. It looks like the deer are starting to get to it a little bit on this edge over here because they're mainly coming from this direction. I had a few brassicas I just broadcasted in here. I see the deer munching on them too. I'll take you up to the brassica plot here in just a second. But I do have a few brassicas scattered through this corn because it was, it was pretty open. Um, throughout the growing season in this field corn you can see these big brassicas they got plenty of sunlight to get to their full potential they're huge but like I said in that silage corn that was just com complete darkness throughout the growing season but now it's actually more open than the field corn because of the coons but you can see over here there's definitely more corn gone from the deer because they're coming from this direction but still not much corn gone. <laughs> we got a lot in here. Just a lot of these outside rows are starting to disappear, but considering the amount of food we have in this field, this little bit of outside stuff that's gone is nothing. You can see these beans here I have on the edge are getting pretty thin too. Those will be gone here in a week or so because they're coming out here, starting here and just feeding in their way into the plot. These beans didn't grow that good anyways. There's a lot of weeds in here. Anyways, don't want to make this a super long video, but I gotta check my trail cameras yet too. But anyways, here up here, here is the uh, one acre bean field. Those beans were planted pretty late, like I think around June 10th or something. So they're not really the tallest beans, not really the highest yielding. But they look better than these beans right here. 
and there's a lot of beans in there. Right there's the brassicas. So this is our core food source. We got an acre and a half of corn, maybe closer to an acre now with all the coon damage in there. Just a straight acre of beans. Hardly been touched other than a few of these outside rows here. A little bit thin right here. This is our core food source, but then if you go that way, a couple hundred yards, we have another acre of beans, and then maybe like a third of an acre of beans, and then we have about having a um, half acre of corn way out there by the road too. So this core food source and that core food source, and we have a little bit of beans over that way too by the hill. A little bit of brass, because here I added it up, we have right around five acres of food on the property this year. A little bit more beans than this year than corn. Here's my brassica plots. Um, let me go up there so the sun glare ain't so bad. You can see right here, this is uh, Whitetail Institute Wintergreens. I split this uh, plot up in, in two halves. Up there I planted the Jeff Sturgis blend, the um, Northwoods Whitetail blend, Sweet Feast Brassica blend. First year ever trying that out. And this was all no-till by the way. You can see all the old uh, buckwheat thatch right here. There should have been some winter rye thatch in here in some places because I had some winter rye in here last year. And I got some winter rye in here this year overseeded. I didn't want to go super heavy because I know that stuff gets a thatch layer built up. It's just there for years. Like right here, some winter rye thatch from last year. And then I got some new winter rye this year. Anyways, this was a little bit thin, these brassicas, but that's all right, especially in the spots up here. You can see in the uh, whitetail wintergreen um, blend, there's a lot more of the kale and forage rape varieties, all of this stuff. And they're definitely eating on it a little bit. All those dark green leafy um, kales and forage rapes, there's a really high percentage of that and just a few purple top turnips in this blend. But in the Sweet Feast Brassica blend, I'm not really sure which one I like better. <clears throat> they had all those really tall things that did absolutely nothing. Whatever variety of Brassica that was, it just grew really tall. The deer didn't eat on it because it was like September and they just died off with the first frost. So that was kind of a, a pointless variety to have in here. It's all dead and not going to offer much to the deer. Definitely more purple top turnips over here in this variety, but they don't really eat on the leaves of the purple top turnips at all. They just eat on the bulb later in the like January, February, March if they can get to it. But if there's like two feet of snow, they won't even touch, they won't even, especially if it's ice packed snow, they're not even going to get a chance to eat these things until the snow melts. I don't really like turnips for that fact. Um, you can see it's got whatever this is. This is a different variety of brassica, these things. It looks like they're eating on these ones a little bit. Like right here, there's some leaves missing. That might be a different variety. Look at how big these leaves are. There's definitely more varieties in this brassica blend. And there was, there was tillage radish in this blend, but I don't really see much of it. They just hammer that stuff as, as soon as September. I saw a few of them out here, but <clears throat> I don't see any many more. But uh, I really think that blend down there, the whitetail wintergreens, and I've even planted honey hole in the plant. Honey hole is pretty similar to uh, the wintergreens blend. It has a lot of that forage rape and kale, where this stuff is a little bit smaller. And right here's a forage rape or kale plant. You can see once you get this late in the in the season, the forage rape and kales are what really carries these brassica blends because. The purple top turnips, right here's one that I've seen that they maybe tried to bite at. They don't really eat these leaves, but uh, they do eat forage rape leaves. You know, now that I'm looking at it, I'm seeing way more browse down there where I just was. I mean, there is some browse in here, but that's mainly just on the forage rape and kale plants, like I've been saying. Ah, oh, this stuff is just dead. Right here's a, a cedar tree cut off and dug a hole. I knew they'd rub it up. And they have a, they had a scrape underneath here. So, I don't think I'm going to be planting this uh, 
a sweet feast brassica blend in the future see they pulled that one out didn't even eat it i'm going to be sticking with the whitetail winter greens and the antler king honey hole those are my two favorite brassica blends this one definitely does have more um, diversity more different types of plants but if i mix in the, t the tillage radish with those ones i think i i get the best of both worlds i get er the tillage radish early season and then the forward draping kales later in the season you can see there's just more tonnage over here these forage draping kales hold up better in the cold weather just look at how much more tonnage there is in the ground here how many more leaves there still is and they're just nipping this stuff off like crazy see all these nip tops so definitely looks like they're hitting these forage draping kales better anyways enough with brassicas i'm gonna take you over after i check a few cameras on this side i'm gonna take you over to those other big food plots so you can get a quick look at those before the snow flies so next update on these plots will probably be sometime in late january honestly after the season i usually don't walk around like this too much out here during the season i still have a buck tag so i will be hunting out here a little bit this late season but it's really hard late season with so many deer popping out you end up just creating kind of a couple one and done sits because it's really hard to hunt without spooking these deer on these food plots so anyways see you when i get over there well here i am over in the field of dreams food plot now this is the other big food plot i was telling you about um it's primarily all beans this year with just a few corn strips you know splitting up the plot this plot i had a heck of a time with weed control there's a lot of weeds out here in these beans but doesn't make any difference to the deer they're still eating the beans but it just kind of hindered the growth a little bit of the beans this year plus i suffered these beans suffered a lot of idc that iron chlorosis whatever it's where the beans um the leaves turn yellow and they stay yellow and actually slows down the growth and drops the yield like a lot so that's why these beans are so short this year um i don't know what i gotta do to fix it i gotta try and buy a idc tolerant variety next year or something um because in the past i've had waist high beans in here and these are all knee high this year and it just didn't turn out as good as, as good as i was hoping but nonetheless there's still food here for the deer but um definitely not as much as what there has been past years in this field but we do have more beans up that way that look a lot better and a little bit of corn up there too so that'll kind of balance out they'll finish off this field faster than they have in the past that's my guess you can see our deer stand right there tucked up against that cedar that's all corn splitting it up um this was again silage corn and the coons got a lot of it after they picked that field right there um like i said it, the silage corn kind of stayed kind of doughy it grew really good i'm really happy with how it grew but uh the, the fact that it stays doughy after it you know dries down kind of the, the coons just gravitate towards that stuff as you could tell the beans were a little bit thin right up in the beginning right where they kind of come into the plot once you get in here there's definitely more beans left but uh they'll finish it off you know last year i came here and i think it was january 10th or maybe it was like i think it was january 10th and a lot of the beans were pretty much from here over all this beans was here and then I came back like a week and a half later and the whole field was just decimated and leveled. There probably was a ton of does out here. This is the side of the property where it seems like there's always more does on for some reason. I'm just following a trail right here in the beans. Look at how destroyed this corn is over here. Corn is good, but the fact that the deer, I mean the, the coons just destroy it every year unless you have a ton of it look at that it's completely gone that's why i still think beans are the number one late season food attracted i don't care what jeff sturgis says but if you got coons in your area look at how much food is gone if this was all beans it would all look like that food the fact that i had corn here the coons got it all before the deer could get to it and it's all gone so in the future, 
I either got to plant this entire field into beans or entire field into corn because if I split it up like this, one of the crops is going to get destroyed. Like that was a corn field this year. I should have probably did all corn this year. The fact that it's going to be beans next year, I'll do all beans. Because on the years where it's less beans, like if I were to do the beans area into corn and the area I have corn right here into beans, the deer would have browsed the beans pretty bad. But uh, these soybeans can handle a lot of deer browse unless you have, and if, unless you're in an area with like no ag, or hardly any ag. We don't have a super high deer numbers here, but we got a good amount of deer. But the coons are screwing up my corn worse than the deer are screwing up the beans. So I got to be careful on these small corn plantings because the deer, I mean, the coons always just get, get to it. Look at that. That's just terrible. What a waste. These ones are even gone too. The deer might have got these, these ones out here that are still standing. But all that flattened stuff is all from coons. Just a little bit right here in front of the deer stand. I mean, look how thick this stuff grew. It grew really thick, really nice, and the coons just had to come in here and destroy it. All this stuff yielded really good. All this is gone. Still a little bit up here, it looks like. Just that corner down there is the worst spot. There's still quite a bit of corn in here. Look how the tops are all busted off from the wind. And then this other side over here, this stuff is just super thick. This is that silage corn. And then we got quite a bit more beans over on this side again. Um, these beans over here look a little bit taller than the ones on that side because that's the lower side of the field. As you can see, it was pretty dark dirt down where I just was in the corn. That side has the really high levels of that IDC. It always screws up the beans. It keeps them yellow throughout at least half the growing season. But these ones that over here I noticed were definitely less yellow. Plus this was corn over here. Where that was two years of beans, but I don't think that's going to matter two years of beans in a row. It's just the, the IDC levels in the soil is just really bad. The iron chlorosis. But uh, this is always the drier end of the field with more sand. And so we got a little switchgrass edge up there for nighttime bedding. Um, yeah, it's going to be a heck of a late season here. I can't wait to come out here in mid-January and just see this whole field just all tracked up and leveled from the deer. It's gonna be amazing. But as you can tell, even these beans are only about knee high. Where I have a plot just up that way and plots in my backyard at home that are all waist high beans. And if you pluck a plant off here, it's only got about 30 pods per plant. With those waist high beans, they got 50, 60, even close to 70 or 80 pods per plant. So this is only like half the yield that it could be. If these beans would have produced a little better, I threw plenty of fertilizer on this plot. It's just, uh, it seems like every year we're, like I said, that IDC just keeps screwing us up more and more. And it seems like the more tillage you do, the worse it gets, the worse it gets too, year after year. So I don't have a no-till planter, but no-till would probably be the best, plus buying a tolerant variety. And I guess there is iron, like fertilizers, whatever that you can put it in the ground too. I've done a little bit of research on it, but I gotta look into it more so I can hopefully get these beans bigger next year. Cause I'm gonna do primarily all beans, maybe just some brassica strips next year. No corn in here at all. Um, Cause these screen walls don't really do a whole lot. The deer don't really feel any more safer just having that little bit of screening. Plus this is a pretty small. I'm trying to get some trees to grow along here to block off the big open field, but these are all secluded fields back here anyways. So the roads are really far away. So if it's a low pressure parcel, the deer should feel safe out here anyways. But uh, just kind of a bummer. Look at these beans here, they're gone. Everything's coming from this way, but like my guess, I'm not a farmer or anything, but my guess these beans are probably, I know this, the average for Wisconsin 
is right around, I think, like 40 to 50 bushel beans. These have got to be below that, probably around like 25 bushel. They don't look that good. My other beans, those are definitely 40, 50 bushel beans. So that's what I mean. This is only half the food is what I could have grown if it would have grown better. So I'm just trying to maximize my food plot acreage to grow in as much as possible on as little as possible. It's hard to do year after year. But anyways, it's going to be a heck of a food plot. I'll see you next time out here uh, mid-January or early January whenever I get a chance to get out and see a whole bunch of tracks. The season's open all the way to the 31st of January, so I may or may not do one during season. Depends on if I get my buck here or somewhere else. Um, but yeah, I will be having updates on this, uh, all these food plots, on other food plots and other parcels later in the winter too. So stick around for those. You'll see those coming out probably January, February time frame. So yeah, see you then.